Hello, I'm here to give a solution for permutation CFG. So to start, uh, we'll start with some preliminary definitions. So let's let, let len of ij denote the length of the sequence, which starts with j after you apply i iterations of it, of the algorithm. Uh, in this case, like if you apply zero iterations, it's just j itself. And otherwise, you get this recursive formula. Um, and it looks very similar to binomial coefficients, and you can actually write it in terms of binomial coefficients, but that's not really necessary at the moment. Um, uh, another thing is you can also write the number of times x appears in a sequence that starts with j after iterations as uh, in terms of like the DP table that you define itself. So this is like very nice. You can take advantage of this later. So let's think about the naive solution. So uh, we'll define f of like all these k a t n, the number of times k appears in the first elements of the sequence. Um, this is just basically from the definition of the problem. Um, so one way we can do this is let's iterate through, like let's repeat this t times and iterate through, through per permutation in order. We subtract len of t like perm i while a is bigger than um, like the ith value of the permutation. And once a is too small, we recurse on the smaller subproblem. So uh, we reduce n, we also reduce t, and a also gets reduced. Um, uh, k stays the same. And new a is just uh, you subtract these values. So um, as you're iter iterating through the permutation, you need to also remember to remove elements that are bigger than your current n. Um, so it might be easier to look at this in actual code, uh, because it's a little bit hard to explain just in words. So this is kind of like the code of what it looks like. Um, in this case, cap is initially n. Um, and basically, it, like we iterate through each level, go through the permutation in order. If the length is bigger than a, um, then that means that we stop here. We set the new cap to be perm i. Otherwise, we subtract the length, and then we add the number of what times k appears in this sub-permutation. Um, to our answer, and then we just print the answer. So this is kind of the na naive solution. Um, so there are two parts we can speed up. So uh, one is finding which index to go to at each level, and one the other is finding the sum of contributions at each level. So going back to the pseudocode, one is where exactly do we call uh, like this break, like which i, and the second subproblem is actually how do we compute the sum of these values here fast. So the first one, to speed that up, there are many different ways you can do this. So uh, the way I thought uh, would be fastest is thinking about it in terms of like parallel binary search, because we can do this all offline. Uh, so we'll process each level one by one. And then for each query, we'll tr keep track of like the lower bound and upper bound of where we think this value will be. And then since uh, we're basically building, we can build the um, like a binary index tree of like sum of links uh, from left to right for each prefix of the sequence. Um, and then each query can just check like it's been point at the right point one query in the bit. So then this way you can do the binary search for all the values at the same time. You don't, you can rebuild uh, like this. You can do a binary search on this very fast. Um, another way you can do this is I think you can do this with like some persistent segment trees or persistent data structures. But that has a little bit more overhead, might be a little bit slower. So um, yeah, parallel binary search is fast. Uh, the second speed up is basically we want to compute this loop fast. And um, this optimization, optimization is a little bit harder to explain. But you can think about like keeping a vector of like length of 0i, 1i, 2i, all the way to ji. And then if we want to like move, we want to change i, it actually, like you can write this in terms of just like uh, multiplying by a constant matrix. So this matrix will be the same regardless of the value of i. So this actually makes it very nice. Like uh, if you keep track of the sum of like each of these elements individually, then we can just multiply by some appropriate matrix and then we can get the offset sum um, uh, very easily. So um, actually like multiplying by a matrix might be a, little, be a little bit slow to do in line. You can actually expand out what the closed form of this formula should be, it turns out to be some binomial coefficients. So um, this leads to a very clean solution other, other, other than that. Um, 
So yeah, that's a quick overview of permutation CFG. Um, you can look at the code uh, in the judge solutions for more details, uh, but this is kind of a quick overview of how you would approach this problem.